Hi guys, Mr. Holmes here getting ready to talk to you guys about how to solve rational equations. In this section, you guys will learn how to solve a rational equation by cross multiplication and by using the least common denominator which is also known as the least common multiple. Now, to give you a better understanding, if you have not already seen one of my videos on how to simplify rational expressions, I strongly suggest that you go back and watch that video so you can gather the understanding of how to find the least common denominator. Alright? So behind me what I have is our first example. Before I do this, I want to bring back proportions to the front of your brain. Alright? So let's talk about proportions real quickly. Let's do something like 5 over 2 is equal to some number over 10. And we must find this number. Keep in mind that a proportion is simply two ratios that are set equal to each other. All right. And the method that we will use here to solve a proportion is by using cross multiplication. Some of you guys may know it as the butterfly method. Where you multiply opposite numerator and opposite denominator here. So this would be 50 is equal to 2x. Solving it for x, you would divide both sides by the coefficient and get 25. The objective here is not so much to find the answer, but to understand that when you're looking at a proportion, we will use cross-multiplication in order to solve it. Alright, so why did I bring that back up to your brain? Because here, what we have are two rational expressions that are set equal to each other. Notice we have a quotient, a quotient, equal sign, together it makes a proportion. And we can solve this proportion by cross multiplication. We can multiply 3 times 4x plus 5. That means we must distribute here this 3 times 4x plus 5. And we're going to set it equal to 9 times x plus 1. And doing so, what we'll get here is multiply by using the distributive property. We'll end up with 12x plus 15 is equal to 9x plus 9 when you distribute. Notice we're dealing with a linear equation. And when you're dealing with a linear equation, we just simply solve a linear equation by moving all variables on one side. So here I'm going to subtract 9x from both sides. And I'm going to move my 15 to the opposite side, meaning I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. In doing so, 15 minus 15 will go to 0 here, simply leaving me here with my 12x minus 9x. This will give me 3x equals, well, 9x minus 9x, this will cancel out. And here we have 9 minus 15, this will give me a negative 6. Dividing both sides by the coefficient of x, we simply get x is equal to negative 2. Here we have our first rational equation. Notice it's set up as a proportion, so we use the cross multiplication method. Keep in mind here you have a monomial times a binomial in both cases, so we must distribute, and after distributing, we just solve it as we will any linear equation. If you understand this, what I'm going to ask that you guys do is pause this video, jot this information down. If you have any burning questions, please feel free to bring them to your instructor for further understanding. Alright guys, here we have a, another example of solving rational equations by cross multiplication. Alright, so behind me what I have is negative 3 divided by x plus 1 and we have it set equal to x minus 5 over itself. Notice here, we have two ratios that are set equal to each other, therefore we have a proportion. And because it's set up as a proportion, we can use cross multiplication. Alright, so what we're going to do here, we're going to cross multiply opposite numerator times opposite denominator here. So here I'm going to have my negative 3 times x minus 5. And I'm putting x minus 5 in parentheses because it's a binomial. 
Here we have a binomial times a binomial. Stepping up in rigor here, we have x minus 5 times x plus 1. Notice this time what I did was I put them both in parentheses because we have a binomial times a binomial. All right, so we have a monomial times a binomial monomial, one term. Here we have a monomial. That monomial does, does not need to be in parentheses. However, a binomial and beyond must be in parentheses. I should I say strongly suggested. So whenever you have a binomial times a binomial, you can use it, you can multiply these two by using any method of your choice, whether it be the distributive property, whether it be the box method, or any other method of your choice for your method, it does not matter. You can still you still should come up with the exact same product. Alright? So here, when we multiply x times x, I'm going to use the FOIL method here. x times x, this will yield my x squared. x times positive 1 will give me positive 1x. Negative 5 times x will give me negative 5x. And negative 5 times positive 1 will give me negative 5. Mind you, we are multiplying all of the terms. Here we have negative 3 times x will give me negative 3x. And negative 3 times negative 5 will yield a positive 15. What I would like to bring to you guys' attention is that notice that we are no longer dealing with a linear equation. Instead, we're dealing with a quadratic equation. And when it's quadratic, you should have been taught to set the equation equal to 0. Alright? So here we're going to set this equation equal to 0 and combine like terms in a process. So here we have my x squared. There's no other term like x squared. So I'm going to bring my x squared down here. So I have x squared. My x and my negative 5x would yield negative 4x. That's the linear portion. However, my linear portion on the right-hand side is a negative 3x. So I'm going to add negative 3x to both sides to move it from the right hand side to the left hand side. All right. Here my constant portion is negative 5 so I'm going to bring my minus 5 down here and I'm going to move my positive 15 to the opposite side of the equal sign by per performing the opposite operation in this case subtraction. We're going to subtract 15 from both sides. Doing so we will have nothing on the right hand side of my equal sign. Notice my Right hand side will start it off with a negative 3x, but on the left hand side is of opposite operation. So it's my 15. It was a positive 15 on the right hand side of the equal sign, but now that we're on the left hand side, the sign has changed. From here, we will simply combine my like terms. My like terms here, I have no like terms with like x squared, so x squared is going to come down. Notice I have a negative 4x and a positive 3x, this will give me a negative 1x, and I have 15, and negative 15, and negative 5, this will yield me negative 20, and it's still going to be equal to 0. From here, what I would like for you guys to notice is that the coefficient of my x squared is a positive 1. And because it's a positive 1, we can go ahead and look to see if we can factor it. Also keep in mind, because it's quadratic, one method will always work. Even though I'm going to use the method of factoring, the quadratic formula. If you, if you like the quadratic formula, please feel free to use it. And if you use it correctly, you will get the exact same answer that I should get. Alright? So here, I'm going to open, because the coefficient of x squared is 1, that will allow me to open up my two sets of parentheses right now if, at, if it's factorable. And I'm going to put each in each set of parentheses in x. And I'm going to find two factors of negative 20 that will add to give me negative 1. And those two factors will be negative 5 and positive 4. When we multiply, we get negative 20. When we add, we get negative 1. From here, we're going to go ahead and solve this here. This is the product property, this is the zero product property, which tells us and allows us to set each one of these equal to zero and solve it. All right, so here we have x minus 5 is equal to zero and x plus 4 is equal to zero. When solving this here, we have 
x is equal to a positive 5. And let me rewrite that better than that. There we go. And we have x is equal to negative 4. All right. Notice we have two solutions. And when you have two solutions, I would strongly suggest that you go back and you would substitute both of these solutions into your original equation and check to see if it is indeed the solution. Alright guys, now that you have your two solutions, always go back and substitute them in to see if one of the two solutions is indeed an extraneous solution.